Welcome to this tutorial of personal cash flow. My name is Manus Neuer. This tutorial continues on personal cash flow with Excel part 1. In part 1 we looked at a case study and how daily cash flow is managed for our subject. She graduated college in 2010, is employed and pays rent, has two student loans and two credit cards, manages her everyday expenses in a credit union or bank checking account, has a savings account at the same institution, is fairly computer savvy, and wants to make sure there's always enough cash in her checking account, pays her bills on time to avoid interest charges, and grows her savings over time. In the last session, we built a personal cash flow for June for the current and next month, whereby we uh, looked at the different types of expenses, their transaction dates, um, incoming uh, income and expenses, and the bank balance at every point in time uh, where we uh, are able to see what the minimal balance is at each point in time. We also showed how the daily bank transactions cash flow connects with other data sources such as loan payments and credit cards. In this session we'll take a look at how we can connect our cash flow to our monthly budgets. A comprehensive cash flow takes into account not just the immediate transactions for this and next month, but also a projection of cash flow for future months based upon your budget. Let's demonstrate how that can be done in Excel. In our previous session, we had a look at how Jane manages her daily cash flow by transcribing her uh, daily bank transactions into the cash flow worksheet. As she was planning for September, towards the end of August, uh, she recorded her actual transactions for August and then her expected transactions for September. That gave her a view of what her uh, lowest point in the month would be and uh, was an effective way to look at the immediate cash flow. However, the question remains, uh, how should she be looking at her daily finances beyond September? So she has constructed a budget. Um, she started from August where she has all of her expense and income types listed from the largest to the smallest. At the bottom she has her uh, total income minus her total expenses making her expected net cash flow. Now this is just a plan and what we're going to want to do is incorporate it into a total view of her cash flow over the coming months. Um, just a bit of mechanics, a uh, good way to manage these expense types or to uh, alter them. Uh, we keep a list of the expense types in a separate worksheet and then in the budget uh, we do uh, data drop downs where we can select an expense type and so if she has to add a line and put in another expense type she can do so. As we can see her budget is fairly consistent. Uh, in December for holiday spending she expects to increase some online purchases and gift purchases. Uh, she also has savings in her budget and we'll be able to adjust those savings to um, align with the expected cash flow, increasing savings when cash flow goes up and decreasing them when cash flow goes down. Now, how can the transactional cash flow that we looked at initially uh, join up with the budget for a total view? This is where we're going to get to the monthly cash flow summary, um, pulling from different data sources. For the months of August and September, we're pulling from the cash flow transactional one that we've already recorded. As we can see, the transactions coming through our bank account, and uh, we know what the credit card transactions will be coming in September, so we can confidently project going forward for September. We started with an opening balance of 1000 in August, and then as we went through, the various income and expenses are all linked to this cash flow worksheet. But as we move into October, uh, there, the income and expenses are linked to the budget worksheet. And so as the budget changes, if it does, that will impact this. Um, as we can see, her minimal checking balance is expected to increase somewhat and then decrease in December. To get a visualization of this, uh, we can pull a chart in and see that the monthly cash flow, minimal checking balance in blue, and the net cash flow in orange. Now, as Jane looks at this, she might say, well, I don't really need more than, say, $800 in my bank account because I prefer to I'll put the rest of the money in savings or investments. And then what she can do is go back to her button and say, look, um, let's save some more in October, November. So we'll put $700 in each of those months and then come back to the chart and I'll be able to see that this is adjusted so that uh, we're keeping to approximately $800 
buffer in our bank account. Uh, to summarize, uh, we've looked at transactional cash flow in our first session. We've looked at budgeting, monthly budgeting uh, right now, and how we can put those or join those two together for a comprehensive cash flow looking at the current months and then future months based upon the budget. Now as Jane uh, gets back into planning mode uh, towards the end of September, she will want to um, put October's expected transactions in the cash flow worksheet and then redirect the October monthly summary so that instead of calling on the budget formula, it will call on the proper range in the uh, cash flow transactional. So that as we move forward, this data source will change over here. Instead of budget, it will shift to cash flow. Thanks for watching this presentation. If you need any help with your personal cash flow needs, please do not hesitate to contact me at mnewer at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to download the Excel template that I will be attaching to the YouTube video of this session. Thanks again and have yourself a great day.